Hello everybody, how's it going? I thought I'd do a quick update on my LS3 rebuild. Um, I got my cylinder heads redone, three angle valve job, resurfaced. I was going to do porting work, then I did the math, and considering these things flow 330 cubic feet a minute of air through them, and you figure out your horsepower by doing 330 times 2 plus 10%, so that's well over 720 horsepower. I really don't think my engine is going to be putting out that kind of power. I'm hoping for approximately 650 at the crank. And so that being said, I didn't bother doing any porting work to them because they flow good enough. Um, if I was going to go nuts, I would have probably got them ported, but I think it's good enough. So I got the BTR uh, double springs, retainers, and clips. I got the BTR Stage 2 cam. There's a specs on it. Um, there's two BTR Stage 2 cams for the LS3. I didn't know that at first. I realized it later on. And the difference being um, duration at 50 thou, where the BTR Stage 2 original cam that first came out, I believe it was 225 intake duration at 50 and 238 exhaust duration at 50. Whereas, and the intake lift was 615, where the exhaust lift was uh, 585, I believe. The revised version, same part number with an R1 at the end. Uh, intake duration is 225.2, exhaust duration is 238.4, and the only other difference is exhaust lift is increased from 585 to 612. Uh, the difference is, why they did that, I have no idea. I guess Brian Tooley was tweaking. But, nevertheless, I actually ordered the original Stage 2 cam, which is the uh, original design, and I ordered it from Summit Racing, and they accidentally shipped me the R1 prefix, the last two digits at the end of the numbers, being the second design, which is fine. I just hope I don't have any piston to... Uh, Valve clearance issues, I'm going to have to check that out. Um, I also got here Brian Tooley Trinian kit to upgrade my rockers. Um, I didn't open the box yet, and I got some Lucas lubricant for uh, reassembly. As far as bearings go, I opted to go with King bearings. They're coated bearings. They're probably the best racing bearings you could buy. I got a new uh, front cover because I kind of trashed mine, and it was actually warped. Um, as far as connecting rods go, because I'm doing a stroke or 318, these are Summit rods. They wouldn't tell me who makes them. I think it's SCAT. I could be wrong. They're H-beam. Really nice looking rods. I didn't even take them out of the pack yet. And over here we got our, and I think it's also a SCAT, 4-inch stroker forged steel crankshaft. So and all I'm waiting on right now is uh, Keith Black forged aluminum pistons and the rings and I could get my block board out. I went up to uh, 4.070 which is the one size up from the 4.065 standard bore. Here is my piston ring filer I ordered off of eBay. Um, so basically I'm waiting on the pistons to get this project going. Uh, what else do I got? Show you guys. New lifter trays the old ones were actually in pretty good shape. The lifters were not budging at all. But before I even took it apart, I ordered the new ones. Because you look on YouTube, every single guy there taking his engine apart. Oh, my lifter trays are worn out. Of course, I got gaskets over here. Uh, new pan gasket. Felpro head gaskets. Oops. Went with the Felpro gaskets for the head. Here's the uh, new cam plate seal. Metal plate. Um, what else do I got to show you guys? Well, this is really cool. This is a piston ring compressor from Wysco. It's not your conventional one. These are made, um, designed size. They're made for the particular size of your vehicle. So this one here is a 4.070 piston ring compressor. Jeez, I could have sworn I took this thing out of the pack. I guess I didn't. I'll do it again. I was imagining I took it out of the pack. Maybe I was just dreaming that. Anyways, there it is there. 
pretty cool. So you slide your piston in there with the rings. It's concave, so it slides and it presses the rings in as you do it. And you have a nice, safe slide into your bore without damaging or breaking your rings, which is pretty neat. The thing's made out of metal. I thought it was plastic. It's actually made out of, uh, I guess it's aluminum. It's pretty heavy, though, some sort of alloy. So, yeah, I thought I'd get, let you guys know what I'm up to, what I'm doing, and what I got. And one other thing I'm doing, I do have a 2500 RPM stall converter on the car now. And it would even be fine with this cam that I just purchased. But I decided, heck, I got the engine out, the stall converter staring me right in the face. I ended up calling up the converter guys that I deal with, that I got the converter off of. I basically told the guy, hey, I think I made a mistake. I should have got a 3000 RPM stall instead of the 25. And he goes, do you want to exchange it? I was like, wow, sure, yeah, I want to exchange it. He goes, all right, I'll have another one ready for you in a couple of days. Let, I'll let you know. And I was like, that's fantastic. So I'm going to take my uh, converter out and take it back to those guys. And it sounds like they're not going to charge me anything. And I'll get a 3,000 RPM stall. And we're in business. And I just got to wait for these pistons. And I ordered the pistons from Summit Racing Equipment. And unfortunately, I think they're being made to order. So I'm expecting them at the end of the month. So September... I'm expecting delivery September the 29th. Um, I believe I read somewhere they said they were going to ship it out on the 23rd. And if it's getting shipped out from Summit in Ohio, they're really good. I would probably end up getting it on the 26th. Three days tops. They're really good with their shipping. Anyways, guys, um, thought I'd give you guys the update. Um, my LS3 416 Stroker Beast. It's going to be bulletproof. Um, whether or not I'm going to boost it. I'm not sure, but I got to decide whether or not I'm going to boost it when I do gap these rings, because if I do uh, boost it, I'm going to have to gap them a little bit more than you would if it was just going to be an NA naturally inspired engine. Of course, the rings will expand too much and they'll butt and end up breaking the ring land and you're going to have a trashed motor. So I don't want that to happen after investing all this money. And at the same token, if you guys are wondering how much this is costing me, um, if you have the block already in the heads, you're basically buying the all the internals for the short block. And um, Summit Racing has some really great deals. It paid, I believe it was about $1,400 US for the crank and the rods. And the piston and the rings are approximately $520. Of course, the bearings are another $300. Uh, the camshaft was $500. The Trinion kit was approximately $120. This is all American. Um, so machine work, it's pro approximately probably $40 a hole to get them bored out to 4.070. Um, the deck height, this engine used to be an L92. It came out of an Escalade, which is pretty well an LS3. The only difference is the exhaust valves or, or the intake valves. I'm not sure which ones they were. They were saying that they're lighter. They have the... Uh, uh, some chemical in there, or nitrate, or whatever the heck they call it, to cool the valves quicker. You guys know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. I just can't remember the name of it. Anyways, other than that, the camshaft, it's the exact same engine. Um, so I converted that. I took the variable valve timing off. Actually, it's funny I say that, because lying over here is the original variable valve timing L92 Escalade camshaft, sitting in the pile of rubble here with a bunch of junk I'm going to be throwing away. Anybody who wants the cam, I'll give it to you. Just let me know and I'll ship it out. You pay for shipping. Uh, I'm sure if you put that L92 cam in a 4.8 or a 5.3, it'll sound like a beast, considering it's made for a 6.2 liter. It's got 500 lift. I'm not sure the, the specs on the duration. I believe it's 198 intake, 208 exhaust. Don't quote me on it, though. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching the video. Waiting on pistons. When I get them, I'll shoot the next video. And, of course, i got to take everything in to get balanced. Uh, as far as balancing goes, I got to take the pistons, the rings, the uh, wrist pins, the wrist pin clips, uh, the connecting rods, the connecting rod bearings, the crankshaft, the flywheel, the flywheel bolts, the uh, harmonic balancer, the wool, wood I think, key it's called, you know the little key that holds a balancer. It's funny, I sold my original crankshaft on uh, my local paper. Some guy in BC ended up buying it. I shipped it out to him. I forgot to take the key off that thing. 
Didn't realize that key was like $30. Anyways, I ordered another one. I need that for the balancing. Uh, I don't know if I missed anything else. I guess the, the, the crank uh, harmonic balancer bolt would also be included in that balancing. And um, yeah, they pretty well need every single part that moves to be balanced to get this thing right. But just think, it's going to feel like it's electric when you step on the gas pedal. And this thing was fast before. I could just imagine how fast it's going to be after I'm done, how much power it's going to have, especially with the 500 RPM higher stall converter. Um, I was going to change the rear end from a 232 to a, uh, sorry, a 323 to a 373, but after putting this 416 in there, I don't think I'm going to bother. It's going to have so much torque, bottom end power and torque, I'm not going to need it. And uh, it'll just hurt my fuel economy anyways. And everything's being run by the Holly Terminator X fuel injection system. And I got to tell you guys, that Holly Terminator X fuel injection system is, once you get it tuned properly, it works incredible. It runs so well. I'm a really finicky guy. I want things to run really, really, really good, especially for a streetcar. I don't want no hassles when you stop at a stop sign or a light. You want the thing to stop, behave properly, not jolt and pull and buckle and wants to go on you. Or start hesitating and want to stall. This Holly Terminator system, once you get the thing tuned properly, I had the Stage 1 cam in it, which is not that radical. The BTR Stage 1 cam, it wasn't for an LS3, it was actually for LS1, LS2, but it fills up, It fits in an LS3 too. It's, there's no difference. Cathedral port head, rectangular port head. There may be a slight difference in the power curve on a dyno, but realistically speaking, I know those cams are designated for particular heads, but if you swap them and you put a rectangular port cam into a... Uh, Cathedral port head, there's really hardly any difference to even speak of. We're talking like maybe one or two horsepower. There's no earlier or later power curve or torque curve starting or dropping. It's pretty well exactly the same. But they tailor it to the port. So if they tailor it to the port, you're better off getting the LS3 cam. So that's why I did with the Stage 2 cam. So the LS1 Stage 1 cam, which I put in my LS3 originally... Um, the duration at 50 thou was 223 intake, it was 230 exhaust, it was 615 intake lift, and it was 585 exhaust lift. So the BTR Stage 2 LS3 cam, it's got a little bit more intake duration, so it's 225 instead of 223, so they only got a couple more degrees intake duration, or actually 225.2, as I said earlier. The lift is the same. They have 8 more degrees of exhaust duration, or 8.4 degrees more exhaust duration. Uh, the cam is ground backed off, I believe, 2 degrees. The LS1 cam was 115 um, plus 3 degrees advanced ground into it, where the BTR LS3 Stage 2 cam is 113 plus 3 ground into it. L lobe separation angle. Um, so it's got a little bit more duration. It's going to sound a little bit choppier. It's got a little bit more opening uh, valve event. And I'm pretty sure the, the ramp angle and the degrees that the ramp angle opens up at, all that stuff is different, even though it doesn't show that in the um, um, basic specs that they give you. But if you look at the cam card, it gives you way more specs. Unfortunately... And it's funny, I sold my BTR Stage 1 cam immediately when I put it in the paper. Some guy in Montreal, I shipped it out to him. Uh, nothing like a knee transfer, they're great. Anyways, um, I sent him the cam card, and it's funny, the same day I sent that cam out to that guy, Summit Racing's cam, the BTR Stage 2, showed up at my door. Literally, when I got back from the post office, there's a box sitting on my stairs. I was like, oh, that's cool. It usually works that way. If you want to buy something and you got something, you don't sell it and you wait to buy that thing first, you're never going to sell that item. Or I should say, if you don't buy that thing first before you sell your item, you're never going to sell it. It's funny, when you do buy that thing and you're in the hole, you end up selling that item. I don't know how that works, but it works. Basically, take a chance and you'll go ahead. If you don't take a chance, you'll never make a head. You'll never get ahead. Anyways, forgot what I was saying, but you guys remember, and it's all recorded. Anyways, um, talk to you guys soon. I'll let you know when I get the pistons, and I'll take it out to get balance, and then board out, and then we're going to do a little engine assembly and do some piston ring gapping. 
and the greening of the camshaft make sure everything's exactly what the cam specs say and speaking of cam specs that's what i was getting at so when i got the stage two cam from summit racing equipment i was all excited i opened it up and lo and behold no cam card so i uh text summit racing and their um, customer service said if you want the cam card specs right away i advise you to call btr and gave them their number they gave me their number, uh, Brian Tooley Racing's number. I called Brian Tooley Racing, and sure enough, they emailed me the uh, cam card, which is great, and they're going to mail me the hard copy. So there you go, guys. Um, take care of yourselves, and if you like my videos, give me the thumbs up. I'm not going to show my ugly face. What for? Oh, boy, my back's gone. Anyways, I can't wait to get this thing going. I'm all excited. It's going to be a nice, cool October break-in period because it's going to be October, probably the second week of October before I get this thing actually on the road. Anyway, stay safe, take care, and if you like my videos, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Have a good one. Bye-bye.